Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Line Report. It's been way too long since I talked to this guy, one of my favorite people in the industry. Definitely my top five Serbians of all time. I can't even name one other, so you're probably number one. He is the mind. He was an awesome bodybuilder back in the 90s and early 2000s. Now he's an amazing contest prep coach. Some of the absolute top bodybuilders in this world. Please welcome Milos Sharshev. What's hey, up? Ron, it's good to, to have you finally. Yeah, as soon as you send me a message today, we need to do it soon. What did I tell you? Let's do it now. Hey, you're good. You know, so it's no better day than right now, always. Now, I'm a little upset at you. Do you know why? No. You were in Boston a month or two ago. Didn't even tell me you were here. It was for <laughs> UFC. I know you're probably busy. Yeah, I, I think I arrived know? like a night night before and then uh, time difference and all that stuff. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have some good excuse. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Was there was uh, there a UFC no, fight? Yeah, there was a UFC fight. Oh, it was, oh. uh, but hold on, uh, you live in Boston? I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. I know. Uh, yeah, you probably didn't know because at the Boston Pro, I mean, I'm at most of the I was at most of the shows anyway, so you didn't realize. Yeah, just, you, know. you on uh, all those East Coast shows anyway. So for some reason, I thought that you were more like New York. My bad. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, everyone always assumes New York. I don't know why. I don't talk like that, but. <laughs> Yeah, we could have trained, but now I can't train legs for the next, you know, probably six I've months. Seen it. I've seen it. Oh, my God. You know, I, I can show you my scar. It's yeah. like this long, you know, so yours, you know. <laughs> it's just, you, was it a quad tear? Yeah, I had a, a patella tendon uh, tear. Rupture, wow. Look, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, look at that. You still got the wheel. Oh, okay. All the way yeah. here. Looks just like my scar. Yeah, I did I the uh, quadricep tendon tear, and I tore the meniscus. But yeah, we're we're uh, it, we got better. We're still walking around. Hey, yeah. All right, it's, um, it's all good. Couple topics. Let's start with the freshest one. Okay. So Regan Grimes beat Nathan Deasha a week after Nathan beat him. Yeah, it was only one week apart, right? Yeah. So yeah. here's the thing: perfect. Nathan beats him with a perfect score in Italy, mm -hmm. and then in Spain, seven days later. It flips completely around. Regan beats him with a perfect score. It so wasn't perfect. It, it was not perfect. No, it was know. it was actually uh, four uh, by point at the pitch judging and point in the uh, in the finals. But you say, okay, let, let's define this. When people see perfect, that means like, oh, there was no contest. Right. Sometimes the difference between first and second place can be minuscule, but still evident. And then all the judges see the same way. In Italy, actually, there was a judges also that they could consider uh, um, Regan, but uh, yeah, there was too many things off. The color was way off. The oil was too much, and he was not as conditioned, not as lean, not as dry. And uh, Nathan is complete. And, and first, uh, let me say this: this is probably the best Nathan uh, I've seen. Probably a lot of people have seen. Uh, I mean, so let's give him a credit. He came back after double biceps there, both arms, Oof. after you know long layoff and all this stuff. He looked tremendous. I mean, by all means, and I know that he was super confident and he believed that he was deserving of both victories. You know, all, almost to the cocky side. You know, like which I always, you know, I always think be humble or be humbled. You know, so it was double. Benefit. Okay, I found this on the web for they say. Oh. My my series again. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Siri okay. getting involved. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to shut it off. Stay out of this Siri. You don't know anything about bodybuilding. Anyway. Yeah, but, but uh, I have to be careful. I don't know how this. Uh, oh, geez. Well, let's see what happens. But, but so, he, best Nathan ever. Yeah. Yeah. I think when he hmm. beat uh, um, Samson in that um, Arnold Classic 2021 UK and then uh, at. Uh, um, Italy show a couple of weeks later or three weeks later, you know, he didn't look uh, nearly as good as now. So, yeah, I, I give him that. Uh, conditioning was spot on. Him and uh, Stefan, his coach, did, did phenomenal job. It just, look at this way. It was not the cakewalk in Italy. He thought it was a cakewalk. And then uh, when, when they went to Spain, you know, judges, you know, two uh, I guess one, one the uh, main judge, I forgot uh, who it was. I, I guess he told the uh, manager Matt, uh, they say he, he was judging in uh, Nathan's favor. The other two seen uh, um, Regan winning. And it, it's like 
it, either way, Regan congratulated him in Italy. Yeah. Put a post on his Instagram with a picture of him congratulating him and writing down about congratulations, all this stuff. Yeah. Now, a week later, he doesn't even recognize, walks off, and hey, it's just like bad sport. I, oh. I think, uh, you know, it, it's worth mentioning. Does uh, Nathan, you know, thinks he deserved it? And most of the guys, you probably included, they're conditioning guys. You know, conditioning filter is first applied, and then you say, okay, if it's better condition, it wins. It's not a weight loss contest. I'm using this for somebody who wrote an essay and I like that. It's not a weight loss contest. Yeah. It's not the most strip contest. No, it's not the driest contest. We talk about it. Andreas Munzer will win every show he ever entered. Right. And if you look from the history of bodybuilding, how did all this became the first Mr. Olympia, uh, Larry Scott, and then after that, uh, uh, Serge Oliva and Arnold Schwarzenegger and Frank Zinn and um, Colombo and everybody else, were they at any level of conditioning that yeah, this is who we need to be? No, they're looking for the beautiful, muscular, aesthetic physiques they represent bodybuilding. So you see me do this all the time. Hashtag bodybuilding. Hashtag bodybuilding. Why? This is what we are considering. If you ask me who is better bodybuilder, uh, Nathan or Regan, Regan all day long. <laughs> so this is how I see it. Yeah. And me being his coach has nothing to do with it. I was the biggest fan since 2017 when I've seen his aesthetics and everything else. Did he deliver the uh, greatest package? No, we didn't. And we know that this would not be enough for top 10 at Olympia if he shows up like this. But uh, um, if you think about it, and, and you are very uh, critical, what did Regan Grimes miss since 2017 once he started competing? You know, he was not big enough. So they were telling, okay, maybe he should do a classic. And then he did classic. He did a Classic New York won, and then when classic uh, Olympia didn't uh, fare well. I think his frame is way too big for classic. And, uh, you know, it just wouldn't fill up that frame and wouldn't look good in any other way, but how he showed up this time. Okay, I, I must say, it, when he took off from last year's Olympia to put the size, you know, that was next outing, he had to be considerably bigger. You know, if he showed up very similar to the uh, last time, then where did you uh, spend your year uh, for? And uh, what was it? So we went almost there to 300 pounds. And once he started dieting, and then his weight was plummeting down. It's like, okay, and it was already under 270, 260. And he kind of like panicked, okay? So maybe even in his head, okay, let's keep this size and then conditioning you know, you can see everything from the back, for sure. You can see separated quads, for sure. We are hoping, hopefully, the abs are going to be showing deep and uh, can create the illusion, something that I had, of being more ripped because they have a deep cuts. But it was not meant to be. He's honestly, you know, probably, you know, 10 pounds overweight, you know. So he okay. needed to be uh, much, much leaner. But he was 271. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I know it's more fun when we argue because people love that, but mm -hmm. I'm actually agreeing with you on a lot of points because, like, I remember Flex Wheeler, he won most of his contests not nearly being as conditioned as some of the guys he was beating, um, but it's not he a conditioning did. contest. He had beautiful shape, mass. It, if it's Conditioning is one aspect, and it's very important. But like you said, Munzer, and you could name other people, they were always the most conditioned guys on stage. None of them ever won an Arnold or an Olympia. Most of them never even got top five at those shows because other guys had a better structure, more mass, si uh, proportion, everything. They had everything else in better, in a better ratio than than that. So uh, I had no problem with Regan beating Nathan in there because he was filled out and he did can he did get more conditioned. He looked fuller. Did, did you think he looked fuller? Or was that an illusion because he was more conditioned? No, it, it, it was for sure fuller. You know, listen. You know how, of course, I'm going to always be pointing out a biased coach and having every excuse in the book. So I said initially right away, there was no comparison in uh, conditioning and dryness and leanness uh, of two uh, these two guys. Uh, Nathan beat him in that department convincingly in uh, Italy and 
still, you know, convincing the other show, not, whoa, slam dunk, you know, you have no business here. But when he shows up, he was dwarfing him. Okay. I said this, that uh, Nathan did not look as big as he was in uh, in uh, 2021. And uh, I, I guess he posted the like, oh, interesting. I was 239, now I'm 251. But mm -hmm. people say I was not big enough. You were not big enough, guarantee. You know, so of course, I, don't, I, I didn't stand right next to you and step on the scale, but you can you can pull the, and I have the pictures of Samson and him at 2021. You know, there's no way he was 239, especially not in this kind of condition. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in, in any way, Regan was huge. And I got this response from so many people like, oh my God. So now think that shape, that structure, that width, aesthetics, and with 271. He's a little bit taller, I think, than uh, Lee Haney. Lee Haney was 5'11", yeah. and uh, Regan is six footish. you know? He was 271, okay? So, you know, when they were, they keep saying, oh, so, oh yeah, go back to classic. You don't have a, enough muscle. This is open bodybuilding and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. we needed to set that, uh, uh, you know, score, settle score. He is big enough. He is wide enough. He is complete enough, okay? Now, he was not polished enough and not dry enough and not uh, lean enough. Right now, he is, uh, he just sent me, uh, I, I favored you, so I called you, even though I had like 15 minutes, but I have a, <laughs> I have a, I had a, a long discussion with him, so I'm going to wait for, after we finish. He sent me the video right now. I wish I could, can play it, or maybe I, I'll send it to you so you can. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll throw it in here. We'll throw it in here. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it to you. It looks tremendous. Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to do that. Uh, you can do it now, but when you're editing, right? So yeah, in the future we're we, we're switching to a new software that would allow me to do that, but we're not on it yet. We're yeah, okay. So, so let so, me ask you this: Is Regan big enough yet? Does he still need to fill out, or do you feel like this is it size wise? And now it's just refinement, maturity, polish. You know, is Samson big enough? <laughs> yes, it is. You say right? yes, yes. Yeah, Samson's yeah, big yeah. Enough. So so it's always uh, if you keep aesthetics. And you have so much width, can you fill up even more muscle? I actually do think that uh, that there is more frame to fill. That real estate that the uh, you know Canadian wonder has uh, that he can still be bigger. He he can be uh, bigger in the legs. He can be uh, fuller in the chest, bigger biceps. You know, so there there are the areas. But I get like again all these haters that. I do want to uh, establish haters are absolutely nothing but uh, jealous fans. That's the only only reason why they keep hating and they're fans. They would want to be like him. They can't. And so they would like just to talk shit. You know, what else? Uh, Regan is most likable guy ever. Never talk bad to anyone. I, I just don't get it. He's just too damn good looking. Too, too too damn successful, too too damn popular, and so people like to hate on him. But uh, what I'm saying, and I mentioned this, for me, he has like best aesthetics. Like this is like whoa. But uh, as you said, does he still need to be a little bit bigger? Yeah, for that shape to really be well appreciated, he still needs uh, a little bit more size. We're not gonna go for the Olympia for more size. We. Are, the only job that we have right now is to to get skinless, and he knows yeah. he's suffering big time. And uh, you know, um, from the back, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed he is fibrotic from the traps yeah. to the lats to the glutes to the hamstring, yeah. everything. He still had some body fat on the glutes, so they were not apparent, right? The the ropes that he has on the hamstrings when this is like, you know, <laughs> super tight. Like uh, Jay Cutler on his podcast was comparing him to next to the Tim Budishin, which was super ripped. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to look at from the far and said, like, oh, yeah, it doesn't look that much better. And then manager Matt just blasted Zoom like you can. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. That, that's, you know, devastating for my case. So Regan has to be that kind of cellophane skin and uh, no body fat whatsoever. And then those hamsters are going to be even more visible. And then it's going to be more and more visible than most of the guys. You know how that is? Well, some people can be lean, but they're not deeply separated at certain parts. 
Right. And the people that are deeply separated, once they are ripped and they are dry, then that's going to look like Munzer kind of fibers all over the place. Yeah, you so see, I've seen cool. guys that are very, very lean, but in the back shots, you can't even see the the, the different heads of the of the uh, hamstrings. It's just yeah. one smooth mass. And these guys, they can have ripped glutes sometimes too. It's the strangest yeah. thing, but it's yeah. it's it's like uh, you want to see all the detail. Yeah, yeah. So he has from the back ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, from the front, I want to see the side of chest and shoulders, intercostals and deep abs. This is this is the goal. Uh, to be self-critical, even though I, I went almost every morning you know, to the posing room and, and watching pose, I, I kind of went easy on him and, oh, yeah, he's so tired. He's, uh, and we didn't do, like, enough rounds. And by the time he, you see, he would do the front poses, side poses, back poses, right? And then by the time he turns around, that's exactly what cost him the most, so like side triceps into ab shut. Yeah, this is what we need to improve. Um, I think that he has a beautiful physique for side triceps. He has a crazy triceps, crazy shoulder, crazy hamstring, right? So that pose should look better than what he's showing. They're just they're still trying to figure out. I'm guilty of giving him bad advice for frontal biceps. You know, I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, because uh, 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 he does, doesn't have a, that much of the peak, right? Yeah, they're, so they're full. They're not deep. So I wanna, I wanna, yeah, like spread the lats, spread the, I was like cover more space. Again, be big, be big. Mm. But it was like way too far. Now, if you've seen the recent uh, uh, uploads, he brings them back in and raises a little bit higher. And now the frontal biceps actually looks way more competitive. I wish we had in the last two shows, but it was bad advice. I mean, I, I was surprised because I could tell. He was getting gassed the more the posing the comparison went on by the because they kept moving around and by like the third round where he'd been up there with no break he was just starting his he was having a hard time flexing his legs he was losing it i was like this doesn't make sense to me because i know milos is a stickler for posing i just didn't get it like why is he why is he getting gassed but now i know yeah. that's his cream you know no but uh, yeah i wanted to scream you know especially when you watch uh, online and it's like he can't hear you, so it's good. Uh, yeah, you're so a dramatic scream. They say, yeah, you don't, when you don't have a huge legs, but you have a separation, mm. you don't have a commodity of relaxing them. At least you keep them separated and give them, you know, stable at all times. So that's covered. But then when you lose the legs and you lose the abs, and, and I'm sure I repeat myself a thousand times, you heard me a million times, legs, abs, legs, abs, legs, abs, to, until I turn green. This has to be there. Everything else, even if you try, you can't really lose it. You might be a little bit more, a little bit less. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, John Meadows said the, the best, like, some of the muscles, you don't need to squeeze 100%. 70% and 100% makes no difference. You know, true. some is different. But if you're, uh, if, you're in the, if you're in the first couple rows of the show, you can hear, well, you don't have to be that close. But you'll always hear every coach going, legs, 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 because that's what... 90% of the time when the guys are getting tired, they forget they forget to flex their legs. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. And now that we're saying, yeah, so you are surprised. The plan was four times 20 minutes a day scheduled, okay, for, for him. The first one, I would see it. And then, uh, uh, you know, sometimes maybe a second if it's he trains with me, but he didn't want to train with me. And then he would have to do it twice at home. But, uh, you know, when uh, I tell you post four times and I would tell you, send me the video every time, you can never send me uh, too many, you know, I want to see it. But then the video is not sent. It was probably because it's not made and it's not made because he didn't do it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I love him like, uh, like my son. And of course, uh, I, I think he kind of gets away with the uh, you know bunch of things that uh maybe he shouldn't so manager matt constantly tells me you have to be harsh you have to be on top you know more so i will be he's still in canada he's coming back look <clears throat> for him to make a top 10 it's realistic goal and uh and this is what we are aiming for and if just things go super well then you never know I mean, 
I, I first of all, I don't think I even said congratulations. That was that was a great victory. So congratulations. But I think he gets a lot of hate. It's it's pure jealousy. He's good looking kid. He's got no criminal record or anything. Uh, you know, almost two million followers. He's very popular. He's got great supplement contracts. It's everything that every bodybuilder wants to be. They want to be good looking and you know winning shows and have these contracts and be super popular on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok. He has all that. It's, and, you know, it's not his fault that he's so popular. You know, why do they? I don't. I don't see Bumstead getting any any hate like that. And he's, Jane Carte is oh, uh, Lord. He's got like 20 million, 20 million followers close to on Instagram now. Unbelievable. But here, on question for you. Yeah. If you can right now, would you trade places with with Regan? Have everything that he has. His look. Right. Oh, I mean, moment. physically, I like my life and my wife and my kids, but no, would I trade my body for his? 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, your private life should say the same, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the physical. Like, I wouldn't want to look like, if you asked me that about Big Rami, I'd say, no, no, I don't want to look like that. No, Rami. I didn't ask, I asked you for Regan. But Regan, yes. yes. Bumstead, yes. Regan, yes. Who wouldn't be? Right. Who wouldn't? You know, that's the, the reality of But people want to talk shit, so let them, let them talk shit. Well, yeah. let's move on. We've, we've, uh, so Regan, we'll see Regan next on the Olympia stage, but let's talk about two time Mr. Olympia, Big Rami. Same day, the day before that show over in Dubai, he broke the news first with Bob Chick, said he's taking the year off. I wasn't surprised. First of all, were you surprised? Because we hadn't seen any updates from him. I was like, he's not doing the Olympia. Yeah, I, I had that feeling. And, and listen, I love uh, Rami to death. And, uh, uh, I, I do think that he tremendously improved from the Olympia, where he didn't look bad. He just didn't look convincing to win the Olympia. I mean, you know, when you have those expectations and then he was slightly off and now all of a sudden, oh, you know, like people like to uh, bring him down. He brought it at the Arnold Classic, but that was still uh, not enough. It was just uh, fifth place. So that has to play with your mind. Okay, what do they need me to, to do? And then hearing that maybe he needs some time off and all that stuff. I don't think he was really training because you don't see any video footage. He does have a endorsement contracts like with wow. a bunch of uh, companies and you yeah. don't see him promoting anything. So ugh, I would just assume that uh, he wasn't in it. And uh, so it, it doesn't surprise me. I hope he's going to regroup. Uh, he's still big Rami. He just, you know, maybe need to uh, heal up. He did all this, uh, uh, cell uh, cells, uh, I mean, stem oh, cell yeah, therapies. Yeah. So, hopefully, I mean, those legs were still unbelievable. Uh, torso, yeah, the lower back, lat, lat insertions, something was happening, triceps, something was happening. I heard from Dr. Khan, like that his triceps was responding. So, if he's responding, you know, uh, hopefully training safely, you know, he, he can, you know, be back. But I think it's a wise decision that, uh, yeah, he needed oh, some. Here's a good theoretical question. Big Rami comes to you. For some reason, he's just going to come to you and ask, Milos, should I keep going or, you know, should I call it a career, two Olympia wins, 10 years as a pro? What should I do at this point? If, tell me, Milos, what should I do with my life now? Uh, you know, first of all, listen to your heart. You're a bodybuilder, you're a big Rami, big Rami, bodybuilding icon all over the world in Egypt, you know, godlike figure. This is who you are. You're a bodybuilder and you have Mr. Olympia. And you can still do Jay Cutler, come back and still win it. Hey, you were overpowering people before. I had that somebody telling me that it's time to retire. And and I, you know, I'm so mad that I actually even considered. You know, what people, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, I wanted to come back. I wanted to come out of retirement. I wanted to compete. Long story, I was uh, suspended and all that stuff. But Rami, I don't, I don't think he's done. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he's passionate bodybuilder, genetic freak, okay? Absolute genetic freak. Keep in mind, after he won first Olympia, Dennis James and uh, Chad said he didn't train for six months. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then comes back and uh, wins it again. Wow. So Rami has this in him. I mean, uh, he was not, you know, blown away or by no means. He was super competitive. And I think an Arnold Classic, if they gave him, uh, 
more comparisons, God knows what, what will happen. I mean, he for me, he was good. I mean, some people, there's always a conspiracy theory, just like, oh, they let Regan win just so he could go to the Olympia. People are saying they scored Mar they were scoring Rami down as a message that we want a more aesthetic look. We want the Samsons, we want the Andrew Jack and these big freaky monstrosity physiques. We don't want to see those anymore. Um, but you know, I mean, I don't think you could say Hottie. Hottie's necessarily the most aesthetic looking guy. Derek's got better aesthetics, but I mean, there's all there's always a mix of physiques in the top. It's not like every aesthetic guy is in the top five or every mass freak is in the top five. Uh, do you think do you think he's capable of coming back and beating all these guys that just beat him, or are the young guys just coming up and that's their turn? So. Listen, I think so that uh, on the same merits, how he beat them before he overpowered them. He can mm -hmm. still do that. I mean, very possibly. It's not the other question. And is this like a change of the 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 judging? Then no, I, I think there's always been element of aesthetics and uh, uh, freakiness, and there, there was always mixing and matching. I mean, Dorian was not most aesthetic, and and uh, by all means, I mean, here is the interesting thing. I, I consider, of course, Jim Mannion is the the uh, the Godfather of bodybuilding and most knowledgeable guy, seen most of the contests. He knows everything in a little finger, and he's going to tell you. Even uh, at one show that I was watching with him, uh, he was uh, in California. He was looking at Rafael uh, Brandao, and uh, Rafael was not uh, uh, winning. But uh, he didn't say, "I like his physique the most." Of course, it's just not enough size and you know everything else to be the hashtag bodybuilding and win as a bodybuilder on that stage. Uh, Steve Weinberger, second, uh, uh, you know, biggest um, name in judging and experts uh, said this repeatedly. He loves Lee Haney's physique the most. If he can have any physique, he would want to walk like uh, Lee Haney. And then when I asked him Lee Haney or Dorian Yates, uh, you know, 93, he goes, Dorian Yates. Uh, he goes, he was just not human. And, you know, I would not want to even think that because uh, I'm aesthetic guy. So I would always, you know, go through the filter of aesthetics and Flex Wheeler and Sean Ray, 93 Olympia. Like I would still, you know, go to towards this direction because aesthetics and great conditioning, all this stuff. But then when I really reanalyze all the videos, I said, damn, I mean, Every pose, I could see the reasons that they, they gave it to Dorian. You know, wow. And that's, yeah, that's me, aesthetic guy. And I mm. said, Milos, make up your mind. You know, so uh, there is elements of everything into that. I was still when somebody has that overwhelming size, aesthetics and the conditioning, mm -hmm. then the show is over. So fast forwarding to coming at the Olympia. I do think that uh, uh, Samson has the best combination of all three, overwhelming size, overwhelming shape, and he just needs to be overwhelmingly conditioned. More so that he was at the uh, uh, Arnold Classic. He was good enough there to win. Everybody knows that would not be good enough to win uh, at Olympia. So he knows that. A uh, good thing now that uh, Rami is not coming, a good thing for us is that he doesn't need to uh, overpower anybody, right? He is already bigger, bigger than any of those guys. Okay, so uh, conditioning is going to have to be uh, prioritized. Fair enough. Final subject, classic physique. I know you work with a lot of classic physique pros. They just got a bump in weight uh, a few weeks ago. It was very sudden. Wasn't expecting that. And it took effect immediately. Instead of I thought it would be for like January 2024, but no, they're like this weekend, starting this weekend, you get you get five pounds, you get seven pounds. Do you think they needed to bump up the weight? Do you think they need to keep increasing the weight? Maybe get rid of the weight cap and just judge on the aesthetics. What, what would you do if it was all up to you? Yeah, hell yes. I mean, uh, you probably don't know, but more than a year ago, I mean, close to two years ago, I uh, I contacted Jim Mannion about it and, and I told him. Yeah, uh, I told him, I really uh, think because I witnessed so many perfectly classic guys. They were oh, ready to step on the stage, but they need to lose 15 pounds. I mean, 
it's as good as it gets. So now to lose this 15 pounds, what does this 15 pounds comes from? So they're going to have to lose some muscle and you change the shape. And as you know, when you lose something, you usually lose weakness first, you know, as that's how it goes. So, uh, and I told him, and, and I, I said to Jim, look, many of those guys are already capped up, you know? So even now, I think if you're going to keep that same cap forever and ever, it not progressively maybe increase, that means that these guys cannot bodybuild. They can just maintain what they have. They cannot improve. It's going to be always a stagnant, you know, same old thing. So he told me to, to talk to Tyler, and I expressed this to Tyler. That was at least a year and a half ago because I was still living in a, in a different house. Yeah. And he says, okay, let's, uh, they're going to consider. And, and I guess they were considering. And, and now they came up, and, and I'm glad they did. So if you ask me, yes, for sure, uh, the increased weight is beautiful thing I, I salute. Uh, the danger of what you were saying, which it makes sense, and I would agree with you, don't even step on the scale. You look uh, aesthetic, you look, you look classic, be judged without stepping on the scale. But I see that, you know, some guys are going to think, okay, I look aesthetic regardless, and they're like 20 pounds overweight, and then, you know, I still look good, and I'm shapely and all that stuff. So I, I'm not for uh, losing a classic uh, limits. I didn't really um, analyze that much. Uh, how much more is increased? different per it's not like everybody got it before they made it uniform like everybody got five pounds they did that twice and then they figured out that the taller guys were at an advantage because uh the shorter guys were at disadvantage for some reason like the weight was not giving them as much uh more size i can't remember exactly how it worked but they felt like i think it was they, they thought it was geared more towards bumpstead favoring him but the point is uh somebody like andrew jacked if there was no weight cap at all, but he, he's got a tiny waist. He's got beautiful aesthetics, beautiful shape. Samson too. They could come in and win the class of Olympia. I mean, how do you say, well, your aesthetics are awesome, but they're just too big. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that you and I talk about this. So you probably forgot. Probably. Uh, it's not classic bodybuilding. It's mm -hmm. classic physique. If the classic bodybuilding, it would be like Serge Dubre type of physique. Therefore, Andrew Jack would, you know, fit the picture, right? And Samson, yeah, is, is aesthetic as is, he's just like too damn big, right? You know, so uh, I've seen, I mentioned this 2019, uh, um, Breon and uh, George Peterson beating uh, Chris Bounce. So that's what I think that you and I talk about it. And I, at that time, I was thinking more as a classic bodybuilding. And those guys, especially because it was only, Front and back, uh, front uh, front and back double biceps. So back and biceps, they were smoking Chris at a time, you know, in in those poses, right? And legs and everything. I mean, they they were better bodybuilders. Yeah. But it's a uh, Chris Acido said, no, no, no. They're looking at uh, classic shape, and uh, Chris Bunsen is a poster child, like paragon. What uh, uh, classic looks like? I mean. It's probably it's probably gonna be winning until he retires. That's how good he is. But interestingly, a year later, Chris Bounce had improved so much that uh, I said he would beat those guys even in bodybuilding contest. And Chris Bounce said, if you pay attention, he is entertaining open bodybuilding show maybe probably as as soon as next year. And I, I think he's gonna be damn competitive, you know. And when they're saying, okay, the change of weight was geared towards uh, Chris. No, Chris had like eight pounds more to go, right? So if nothing, it doesn't work to his favor. It, go, it goes against him. You know? They talked about maybe jumping in for fun, which yeah. he's not going to listen to me. He's, he's his own person. But we have four post-Olympia shows. There's a Prague. There's another one in Italy. Oh, that's too mm -hmm. soon. That's, that's yeah, there's there's a few. And, if I, I'd love to see him just jump in with five, eight extra pounds beyond what he won the Olympia, just fuller. I'm sure his condition would still be up very, very good. He he has a crazy conditioning. I mean, uh, when you look at him, you know, some people just have ability to look uh, ridiculous. Yeah. And then you have some people that actually they are very lean and they just don't appear that way. Yeah. You know, uh, like 
might as well the precious example. The manager Matt was saying, okay, not Nathan, not uh, you know whoever else was in the best condition. Best condition guys were like uh, Team Budishin, and uh, so for Roman me, Roman Fritz, Roman Fritz, Roman was Fritz as well, yeah. But looking from the um, you know live stream, he didn't appear to me. You know, so yeah, you could see that. Yeah, he is ripped and all that stuff. But it doesn't pop at you, right? Mm. And uh, some people, when they are, and you can see every fiber moving as they're, you know, like um, uh, Kamal uh, at the Masters Olympia, for example. Mm. You know, this is what they were saying. You had to see it live, not uh, 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 just pictures and the videos. And then uh, when I look back, I said, like, every time I've seen Kamal live, he impressed the hell out of me. Mm. He has that extra something <clears throat> that camera can never get. Dorian. Dorian never looked as good on camera, I thought, as if you were I mean, sitting it, right up close at the show. I, I agree with you. Because uh, normally I was on the stage with him. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And and uh, that 95, I didn't. And that was the first throw. And I think that Dorian was more ripped than uh, Andreas Munzer. Wow. At that, yeah. yeah. And I've seen Munzer like this close. The question for you, because I remember the first the first year that I covered the Arnold Amateur, which I only did a couple of times, it was me and Giles, and they had a division called Classic Bodybuilding. It wasn't Class Physique. This is years before Class Physique. It was yeah. a division that that existed in Europe in the amateur shows for, for a few years. It never caught on, and they never had, to my knowledge, there was never a pro division. No, it never was. But And I don't know. I don't – I think it was a lot more – they were allowed a lot more weight per height than the class physique guys are now. That would be, I'd be, I don't want any more divisions. Let's get that straight. There's 10, 11, we, we're, yeah, I, we're yeah. done. We're done. But yeah. if they were going to have one more, I would like to see one called classic bodybuilding where there is no weight cap. It's just purely the most aesthetic physiques, like the Serge Nubrais, you know, Robbie Robinson, Francis Benfado, uh, Lila Brada, Bob Paris, that type of look would be the ideal. Even That's though, great. when you think about it, the classic guys now they're as they're as big or bigger than those guys that we just that I just mentioned were. Yeah, I I, I don't know about that the category. I mean, I would love it too. Uh, it's still like I said when you look through all the filters of aesthetics and size and conditioning and frame balance and blah 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 blah. Right? For me, still the most important part is aesthetics. We wanna we wanna see a beautiful body. Beautiful muscular body. So now how big that uh, uh, muscular body is supposed to be? Uh, I said this all the time. It's not muscle building. It's body building. You build your body. It's not just, oh, they say it's open. It's still muscle show. Yeah, but not muscle putting it uh, anywhere in whatever shape or form. You've seen um, Marcus Rule, uh, Bautista, you know, you you've seen uh, some of the guys that were just like, forgot about him. It's yeah. Funny. So I just had him on my phone. I was gonna make a post with rule because somebody put uh, is that horrible. I can't even get yeah, to look. Yeah, right yeah, at yeah, that. Yeah, he was yeah. a freak. Good lord. Wow. I mean, look at the width. Look at the size, and even conditioning everything. I mean, how how can you argue? You know that okay. You know so. <laughs> uh, when they say, if if Marcus at his best would stand next to. Nick at his best, of course. I'm a Nick Nick Walker's hater president, right? They're gonna say, <laughs> but no, seriously. If I would, if I would judge, Marcus was way way, way freakier. He was. It does. Nobody had. He had a chest out to here. His shoulders were. I remember standing behind him a couple of times. I could not believe how wide that man was. Yeah. Literally, the first time I saw him was in Gold's Venice in the pro shop. I I think he had just started competing as a pro. He was he, his girlfriend at the time. They were looking, just looking through some shirts in the racks. And I saw him from back. I'm like, who the hell is that? And I was walking around trying not to be a creep. And it was Marcus. So this is the widest human being I've ever seen in my life. Possibly. Yeah, I'm serious. And uh, I know because I was standing right next to him on the stage in a, in a uh, pump up room, you know, it's just, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, and then he, he probably had one of the best chests ever. Until he yeah. told it, you know, it was out to here. Oh, yeah, and, and conditioning was many times spot on. Yeah, 
But he just really okay. lacked a little more triceps, and he would have been yeah. totally complete. That's it. It's all he needed. Yeah, Dyson's was absolutely freaky. Yeah, but but anyway, uh, you didn't mention anything about uh, other guys going into the show. Oh, the Olympia. Uh, well, we're we're doing. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get there eventually. Don't worry. I mean, uh, I tell you, yeah, like closing. I said, like, okay, uh, the last question. Like, oh shit. Oh no, the Olymp the Olympia. We we can't just give that has to be its own interview. We can't. Well, Milos is Olympia picks. That's a whole show because we got oh, so okay. much to talk about. No, but uh, I, I don't want to sound like oh, I I disregard everybody. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think that there's like so many guys that can win the show. Yeah, so it's... many. I yeah. mean, uh, easily six guys that uh, you can flip the coin and and it could happen. If we've had guys... we've had five mis different Mister Olympias in six years now. Oh really? I didn't. Even yes, think it's that. Phil Heath, Sean Roden. Brandon Curry, Rami, and uh, and Hadi. Yeah, five guys yeah. since 2017. Six years, five guys. Since, that's amazing. We're never going to see eight eight guys uh, eight titles in a row ever again. No. Never say yeah. never. Never say um, never. I mean, well, after Arnold did, they said never. Lee Haney did. After Lee Haney, never. And there there goes Ronnie. And then never. And there goes Phil. I mean, think about it. Right. If you ask me, I would, I would say the same thing. No way on earth. And then if you think about it, Jake Cutler won four. And uh and he was second like what six times or something? He was five. I, I think it was six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was second to Ronnie. Uh and Phil. And Phil, you're right, yeah. And Dexter. Right. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. He did get oh okay. I was just thinking of how many times he was second to Ronnie, which I think was four. But yeah, I think he, you're right. He was sick. You got a better, better memory. Six second places and four and four first places. Yeah, there you go. Pretty amazing. And three Arnold Classic titles. He won the Arnold three years in a row. Three times. Three times, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, so so, if, uh, so don't say never. I mean, uh, they 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 see uh, um, Samson, of course, potential to do that. They see Andrew Jack. Uh, they see Derek Lansford. Uh, and then how can you <laughs> don't think of Hadi. Hadi prove himself every time he step on the stage. You know, when you think about uh, Hadi's IBB pro career, if you remember, I seen him in the first show, play second to Raleigh Winkler. He smoked Raleigh in conditioning, right? It was just, they gave it to a bigger guy. Then, uh, uh, you know, he played second to Cedric in uh, San Marino, and he could have, might as well win it. You know, he, every show that he entered, even when he lost to Flex Lewis in Korea at 212, it was beyond questionable, right? So pretty much every time Hadi stepped on the stage as an IBB pro, he could have won. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, when he beat Roly, didn't he hadn't he just turn pro the day before? No, he didn't beat, he lost to Roly, yeah. We, well, when he lost to Roly, when he took yeah, second, yeah. I think he had won the Amateur Olympia the day before. Yeah, yeah, he was competing with uh, with my guy, Reza Zinotlu, yeah, I remember that. And then there was actually something, I, I don't really remember. He, I guess, didn't win. Somebody else win. And then, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, probably it's better not to even mention it. You know, but, but there was something, there was some complaint. And, and then, you know, of course, he ended up winning. And rightfully so, because he was head and shoulders above any, anything. But there was some controversy. And then uh, if he's going to compete, and then he compete next day. And oh, my God. That's, that's like... Um, Super slice and dice that super dry uh, hardy that if you ever imagine like what would be that that was him on the stage. And, and I probably have somewhere on my uh Instagram, but it's like 2016. I don't want to scroll down. I have like a 10,000 <laughs> wow <laughs> 10,000 posts. So Oof. yeah. I do have one last question. What's up uh with the visa status uh for Beirut Tabani? Uh oh, sore subject, but I want to. I want to. I want to uh, see that guy. I've never I, I, seen him in person, you, and I want to. Thank you so much for for mentioning this. Look, now this is becoming that panic mode, right? Uh, he applied for visa, and he couldn't do it. Obviously, in in Iran, he had to go to Dubai month before uh, Olympia last year because there was short time between uh, Romania and uh, and uh, Olympia. He still did not get an answer from that application. Okay. And I guess you cannot apply second time before this is solved. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, they call red tape. 
today on Instagram, and I sent I forward this to to Be Cruz like an hour ago. There was something on Instagram you can see like to get the visa in Dubai, uh, you're not gonna be able to until like 2025 or something. God. So oh. you have to look for some different options, you know. But but now it's really that panic mode. It breaks my heart. You, you see, he's uh, ready. He's very lean. Yeah. I prepare him for five shows, six, and this will be seventh. That he was ready to step on the stage in Behrouz, uh conditioning. You know that he will, it would be super competitive any show that he competed, and he couldn't enter. So how is that? Fair. I mean, I don't want to say you're fair and all that stuff, but many Americans here that they, they don't realize advantages that they have. He legitimately could change his life like Hadi Chupan did. What is a four hundred thousand uh, dollars prize money for anybody, especially for a Iranian guy? Right? What is uh, all the other endorsement contracts right. and appearances. Life, and life changing, they call. Like yeah, Samson so, even called that life changing you know, money when he won the Arnold. Yeah, th thank you for uh, mentioning this. I'm helpless, and I have a lot of people who go, "You're not doing anything." Hadi did uh, for uh, uh, Honey did for Hadi. Uh, yeah, I talked to Honey long ago. So how, how did you do it? Well, Neil, you don't have a company, American company, mm -hmm. and you cannot sponsor him and all that. It took him a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It was very difficult. We we talk. I've talked with Hani about it. And he said it was, it was like the movie Argo. It was in, it was so hard, and it was the very last minute. And uh, it's it's unfortunate because I think he's just caught in the political crosshairs that Iran and the USA have such bad political relations. We make it very difficult for their citizens to gain entry into the USA. It's he not sports out of politics, you know. Yeah, the guys, you know, they, know. which is another reason. It's never going to happen. The US, I don't think the Olympia is ever leaving the USA again at this point. But in the old days, you did the Olympia in many countries. It wasn't always the USA. Sometimes it would be yeah. Finland. Sometimes it would be France. No, France now. Well, it was several. It was always in Europe one year, USA yeah. the next year. I think it would go back and forth. Italy. Yeah. Italy. Yeah. yeah I only did the. You know, my my second Olympia was in Finland. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the, the one that uh, Dorian won. Yeah. You know. To, Ronnie Coleman got last place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was, I was probably, you know, last place sharing with Ronnie. <laughs> I think you, I think you beat. I'm pretty sure you beat Ronnie at that. Show. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take yeah. it. You beat I, Ronnie I, a few times, actually. I'm 16. I'm 16th place, but I, I was for sure ahead of him. I'm gonna make up that story. Oh man, uh, this is neither here nor there. But I saw some guy say that he had won the Masters Olympia on Facebook. I'm not gonna say who he is, but I said hmm. I looked it up because you. You can look up anything in one minute now on your computer, your phone. <laughs> so I looked it up, and he, it was the year that Dexter won, 2012. There were like 30 guys in the show, and he was one of the 15 guys who placed 16th. So that's to me, that's a ballsy thing to say you won a show that you didn't even make top 15 in. Mm. Anyway. Listen, there's, there is, okay, now with the internet, you can check everything. I'm but sorry. I don't want to mention names or anything because they're going to say, I mean, I feel so, so bad. But there was... All over the Europe and in my country, <laughs> yeah. the people that would claim, you know, just like that, like some uh, some uh, victories and all that stuff that never happened. You know, right. it just people could not uh, check, right. and they actually made a career off of it. You know, so, oh, oh yeah, jeez, wow, yeah. yeah. Well, we have internet now, so guys. So if you're thinking of pulling a fast one, being a liar, you're going to get popped like that quickly, dudes. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. you definitely want to yeah it's probably it's probably not good to to mention but i, I have to you, you've seen that uh sylvia samuel claimed that he won the gold medal in olympics it's what? It, yeah in one of one of uh uh old school podcast shows and then uh olympics then, yeah then he says excuse me you know you did what you know and then he yeah there is a what he, event in a, a supposedly 88 Korea, or whatever. I said, like, okay, you were eleven years old or twelve or something, right? And what track? Like, what track? Yeah, was, uh, which Sailing? category? I, I mean, you know, pretty much. I mean, uh, this is example of uh, claiming something that never happened, yeah. but to the extent of Olympic gold medal. I mean, would yeah. any bodybuilder? Hold on a second. In the history of bodybuilding, 
be celebrated if he was Olympic gold medalist in any sport. Oh, yes. He would be blasted all over. I mean, we have a Olympic champion. But anyway, so. Wimmer, I mean, I can't imagine what, I don't, maybe he was good at some sport before bottling. I, I think he was a soccer player, but yeah. And he was a great lifter, but listen, being good in some sport and being Olympic champion are two different things. <laughs> there's a yeah. lot of fast people in the world, but there's only one Usain Bolt, so there. Yeah, <laughs> all right well i definitely want to talk to you again closer to olympia i want to go over the olympia it's going to be an awesome show and i know that you're so you have an eye like no very few other human beings on this planet and you're not afraid to express your opinion so i always love having you on me it's a treat it's an honor it's a privilege and i thank you so much uh, phone call away ron at any time yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. Whatever you call me, we could do it within a couple of hours. Yeah, you're so, awesome like that. I appreciate that. So anytime. I just want to remind everybody, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video. Check out Milos's YouTube channel. It's just called Milos Sarshev, right? Official something. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I look think up Milos Sarshev. It'll pop up. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't even uh, know. And uh, Instagram. Instagram is where you can get me. That's yeah, where yeah. I'm daily checking everything. Yeah. Uh, it's just your name. Just Milo Sarsev, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not IFBB Pro. I think we all know you're an IFBB Pro. Yeah, for the love of God, yeah. Why would they say that? <laughs> they all do. They all do. Anyway. You know, I know. It's like, hey, just put your name. Yeah, that's but to, to say on that one, all these haters, right, that are jumping on, they they uh, post under, under some fake name and cyber heroes and all this stuff. If you're going to make a statement, you know, talk. Put the face behind it. Put your character, integrity. You know, uh, I can talk shit about anybody if I hide. It's a private account. You can't message them. There's no picture. There's zero posts, zero followers, zero following. They're troll. <laughs> troll. We call them troll burner accounts. They're yeah. just. I've had them come after me too, so I know all about it. Yeah. Anyway, Milos, thank you so much. Uh, love having you on. You're the best guest, and I appreciate you so much, dude. All right, my man. That's it, everybody. Thanks for watching this Ron Line Report with the man himself, Milo Sarchev. We'll see you next time. All right. Hey, did you like that video? Smash that like button, subscribe to MD, and please comment down below. Thanks for watching.